It's the NFL on EA Sports, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the Patriots and the Jets, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. Well, we are about a $50 cab ride away from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. Today, it's week three, and we've got a good one in store. That's the New England Patriots taking on the New York Jets. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. On the other side of the field for the visiting Patriots, it's been a great start to the season. Back-to-back -back wins to begin the campaign. Yeah, you don't want to get too excited. There's still a lot of season to go, but they've come out playing good fundamental football, and that might carry them a long way. From his end zone, here's Darius Davis. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So now the Patriots getting set to take over on offense. They are led out by their veteran quarterback hailing from Michigan State, and we like that. It's Kirk Cousins. I like this guy, and the reason I do, he tends to stay on an even keel. Doesn't let too much ruffle him. He will manage the game the way it needs to be managed, take what the defense gives him, and then he can strike at times. Had a touchdown pass. Yes, he had an interception last week, but he found a way for his team to win. And he finds some space, past the 25 to the 27. A check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. 10 carries, 56 yards. It's a pretty mediocre week for him on the ground. Certainly a boon to his offense if he can get a little more output on his touches this week. He should get some more early carries as his team tries to get him into a rhythm. Seven yards there and a first down. The Patriots hit 2-0 here to begin the season, and they come in feeling pretty good after back-to-back -back victory, CD. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. You talk about this Jets defense. They were very good in the win over Dallas a week ago. Have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw. They ended up getting four sacks in the game. Stayed in the face of the quarterback. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to skin the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, meaning the guys in front of him had almost no chance to block them. They were on him in a hurry. This one brought in by Jefferson. Yeah, boy, he had the marker square in his sights, but a good tackle's going to leave him about a yard or so short. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. Here's A.J. Cole now to punt this one away. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. And he'll get credit for a punt inside the 20, not by much, but inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. Leading them out, someone who took the league by storm last year is the most famous Mr. Irrelevant ever from Iowa State. It's Brock Purdy. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Now Purdy. Under pressure, they got him again. Dropped for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. Now, I know we're only two plays in, but after giving up back-to-back -back sacks, something has to change with the protection, and they can't wait to halftime to make an adjustment. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. 
They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return, and the Patriots take over. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Second down, here's Chubb again. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Third down and one. Cousins. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. This defense for the Jets, much improved from week one. They were terrific last week in getting their guys their first win of the season. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for them to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for them to escape the pocket and run. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Play fake. Cousins finds the open target owner. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it. Occasionally, you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Butker's kick here is good, and that'll do it for the first quarter of play. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Patriots in control of the football. As they've got it as we resume action. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. This one a little slow to get cooking. Just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a first and 10. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here's Pacheco once again. And he'll take this up to the 30, a gain of four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Purdy. Finding his target, it's Trey McBride. Look at the big man rumble. That all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Trey McBride, his first touchdown here in the new campaign. And the Jets have taken the lead. 
Well, that's pretty impressive, Charles. It's one thing to be an elite speed wide receiver and have all that yards after the catch into the end zone, but from your tight end? Yeah, you don't get that very often. What you're describing is more like a Tyreek Hill, a Devontae Adams, and Antonio Brown. You're not talking about a guy that lines up or can line up in line and look like an extra tackle on running plays. He took that bad boy downfield just like he was a scat back. Before the game, he told me, I'm going to have a zinger or two today. And I thought, like, oh, a zinger or two? I guess that's a zinger, right? That's a zinger. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. New England trying to get to place on offense. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most don't want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick. Other than the extra point. That's it. And he's going to have a Patriots first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. Cousins on first down. They'll get this one to cop complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. This to Arnold on the short pass, and a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. This to Arnold on the short pass. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Cousins now on second down. This pass going to be caught by Hardman. And a well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Offense was moving it a little bit. Had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. They're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Two minutes to play in this first half, 7-3, our score. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. On third down, Cousins. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 25-yard line. 18 yards the game for number 18. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Cousins now to throw on first down. They set up the screen to Chubb. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. To throw is Cousins. 
And he can't hang on to it, and the screen never got started. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. To the air again, it's Cousins. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown! Justin Jefferson, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Pats will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. That could be an important swing right there, a touchdown of the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room at the half, they'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. Extra point by Butker is on target, and the lead is now 10 to 7. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Jets going to take over now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute to go, they may try and work their way into field goal range and try to tie up this ball game. Purdy's throw complete there to Moore. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Purdy looking to throw. Locates Mooney on the outlet. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. On first down, Purdy. He'll fight his man, LaVisca Chanel. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Purdy now to throw off the play action. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Similar to a shooter in basketball who just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now, we had a guy who made the catch. They tried to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. Purdy's throw complete to McBride. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. Here's Purdy on first and ten. Flush to his right. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. To the right side, and he's got more complete. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. now to throw that one thrown away from the pocket the officials kind of looking at each other but they'll say there was a receiver in the area so no penalty just an incomplete pass Purdy from the gun toward the pylon car and he is out of bounds here five yards that time on the completion and now it's third and goal and that yardage makes this upcoming field goal attempt much more manageable. Agreed, because when you talk to defensive coordinators, they always tell us the 35-yard line on our side of the field, that's the line we guard the most aggressively, because once they get there, they believe they're in field goal range. 
So they're able to make things level just before half and also leave very, very little time on the clock. And I love the way that you phrased that. Brought a little soccer into it. And that's really apropos considering they just kicked a field goal to tie things up. New England with a first down as they begin the drive. And with only four seconds on the clock, time likely for just one snap of the football. That's down the field for Jefferson. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Time to give you folks at home a look around the NFL on this first official weekend of fall. So let's get to it. We'll get started down at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, and it's the Broncos who have the lead in the second quarter. Mike Evans a touchdown reception from there we'll jet north to ohio to check in on the browns at home at cleveland brown stadium and you can see currently they trail in that ball game a touchdown pass there for jordan love lastly let's check in on our nation's capital to see what's happening with the washington commanders at home at fedex field and they trail the visiting bills in that ball game at halftime a touchdown there for Saquon Barkley. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They are all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Both these teams, no doubt, making their final halftime adjustments as we speak. And for the call of the second half, we get it back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. Here's the Jets' offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets, this ball game tied, Charles, so as we start the third quarter... Curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one. And we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the Pee Wee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Purdy. Is going to be incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Well, solid also a nice return there, 14 yards. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. To throw, Cousins. That's caught left side by Hardman. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And Chubb fighting, but nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped short of that first down marker. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. Here's A.J. Cole now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. 
And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And the punt will kick out of bounds, and it'll be spotted inside the 30-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, we all know possessions are crucial in a tie game, and let's face it, I really didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. So when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. We're in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Jets' first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now Purdy. He gets this to Devontae Adams. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. A uh, short one here, caught by McBride. And they will end up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Good work after the catch, going to net him 23 and a first. Purdy will set up to throw it here. His throw incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. A give right side for Pacheco. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. He's going to be sacked back in the 23-yard line. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. I don't think that was a blitz, was it? No, not at all. I mean, there was no blitz called on the play. Had other responsibilities, but he saw an opportunity, saw a path, and he took it. Field goal Joey unit Sly and Joey Sly now. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. Sly able to put this one through. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that. But let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. New England's offense set to go. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. And it's intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. And he brings this one back. He gets a pick six and a jet touchdown. Well, Charles, there's some visibly frustrated players and coaches on that sideline right now because those halftime adjustments didn't work. The turnover problem's continuing here in the second half, and the defense now sitting pretty comfortably as a result of that pick six. Hey, that's a great observation, too, Brandon, because they did make adjustments at halftime. But how about this other group staying a step ahead despite whatever happened in that other locker room? No surprise they're leading, and it's appropriate that those defenders get to add to the lead directly. Extra point by Sly is up and good, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And now out come the Patriots. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines to run in court for very long. You're 
You're not hearing everyone say, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Throwing Cousins. They're looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. Jeremy Chin picks it off. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. So their woes on offense continue. That's the second pick thrown here in the third quarter. And we know it was ill-advised, but that was an opportunity to help them get back into the game. Instead, he throws another interception, and now their task is even tougher. The New York set to take the field. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. Purdy's throw here into the hands of Moore. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Now a second and two. Here's Purdy. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Trey McBride, the target on that throw, and it's third down and two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third down, it's Purdy. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And the Jets are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. They'll run here with Pacheco. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Second and goal from inside the five. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. Pacheco is into the end zone for a Jets touchdown. Able to punch it in on third down. Makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. Slide for the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. That time, a six-play drive. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's Patriot football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter. Cousins now to throw on first down. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Play fake, Cousins. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break. And you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Now Cousins. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Again, it's Cousins. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. 
Montez Sweat able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. That is caught. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They'll run with Chubb. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. They'll try again here from the 7 on 2nd and goal. Cousins now. Got his tight end. That's complete. It's Andrews. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it even though this one feels like a lost cause. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. Nicole Hardman, a five-yard touchdown. And the Patriots have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Cousins will try and throw. That's caught at the run. And he'll get in. As they're back with it, a score now. The lead's down to seven. The kicking unit out for the Patriots as they send this one away. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Another go around now for the Jets' offense. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but... Maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Purdy now to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense gotten it, they were already within the shadow of the goalpost. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Pacheco gets it and tries the left side. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking. And all the way in. Touchdown. Adams, 37 yards, and the Jets are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. Complete at the one, and did he get the football to break the play? No, he did not. They'll say he's out of bounds, shy of the goal line, and they'll be denied on the two-point conversion. And he returns this to the 22. Now the Patriots gearing up to go now. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now. And, they... and that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Patriots. Nick Chubb. 78 yards, and the Patriots are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. 
They'll look to throw. And he'll get in as they're back within his score now. The lead's down to seven. And that almost makes it a brand new ball game. Now it's a one score affair after they get the two. And you have to know they were holding their breath on the two point play because they had to have it to get it within the range that you just talked about. Dialed up their two point play. It worked. Now they're feeling like they've got a shot at this one. The Jets ready to get going again here on offense. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. And you think we're just going to run it three times and put it? You got no big time. And by the way, that's a two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts. They have to be aggressive here. And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first timeout. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. Purdy. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Now a second and ten. Purdy looking to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and need a way of the clock. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Another run on second down. Try to cover up. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Purdy with it on third and long. And that's complete to Adams. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to perhaps salt this one away. Sly able to put this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. So that one CD going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now, as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. So Kirk Cousins in the offense. Down by 10. A little over a minute to go. Their perfect start to the season in serious peril as they come up on first and 10. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Just a difficult situation to be in here in the final minute. Down two scores. You know you need some providence from somewhere. They're going to keep firing away till the end, but this one falls incomplete. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Cousins to throw for it on fours. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to be incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. The Jets with victory seemingly in hand. They take a knee. 
So with that need three weeks in the books, and they creep above 500 now at 2-1. and one. You know, I played with a guy once after taking a knee at the end of the game, and he came in and grabbed the equipment manager and said, make sure you wash that spot, you know, special, because I just took a <laughs> knee for a win. That tells you how much guys enjoy that, because getting a win, no one takes it for granted. This was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and